Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of how we determine the number of futures contracts to use in a cross hedge. I'm going to use a classic example here. Imagine we're an airline and we need to purchase jet fuel as part of our cost of doing business. You may have noticed in the news recently that airlines that do not hedge against price increases in jet fuel, if they are unhedged, that can severely impact their profitability. So if we're that airline, we want to hedge. We want to use futures contracts, probably. The problem is that there is not a jet fuel futures contract that we can take a position in on a standardized exchange. So if we want to use an exchange, we're going to have to go to a futures contract that is correlated to jet fuel. But we're going to call this a cross hedge because if we use, for example, heating oil futures, there's going to be a correlation between heating oil and jet fuel, but they're not the same thing, so it's going to be an imperfect hedge, so we're going to call that a cross hedge. And so we can use heating oil futures because on NYMEX there are heating oil futures contracts with standardized terms. And so here is some sample data that I more or less made up for 12 months in red here monthly changes in the price of futures contracts on heating oil futures that we're going to use to cross hedge against monthly changes in the price of jet fuel. Okay, so we've got a small sample of changes for each. I'll move down the spreadsheet. And then here we've got two formulas here on right in the green. First, the minimum variance hedge ratio. This will give us the optimal hedge ratio, H asterisk. I'm using John Hull's notation that we can plug into this formula here that gives us the optimal number of contracts to minimize the variance in our hedge. Okay, so I'll start with the top formula here. I need three things. I need the correlation and I need the volatility of both the spot asset or the spot price on the asset, in this case jet fuel, and the volatility of the futures contract that I'm going to use. Okay, so for the volatility, that's standard deviation, and I can use Excel's formula there, equals STDEV. That's without a P, so I'm taking a sample standard deviation. That's for my futures contract. You can't see that, but that's for that small sample series above ch monthly changes in price on the futures. I get 3.38, that's the standard deviation or the volatility typically denoted by sigma on the futures, heating oil futures, and then I've got the same thing, the standard deviation or volatility of the price of jet fuel, which is less in this case. I've also got the correlation between those two, the correlation between futures and jet fuel. This is in fact the key to the, the whole formula. And I'm going to use Excel's correlation. That gives me back the correlation coefficient, which here is denoted by rho, Greek rho, which is 81% and confirms kind of what we thought about the cross hedge. It's a high correlation. There is a correlation between heating oil and jet fuel, but it's imperfect. It's not 100%, so we get 80%. We now have all three things we need. I'll take this out to reconstruct it to say equals. Now we're going to calculate the minimum variance hedge ratio equals the correlation coefficient right here multiplied by the volatility of the spot price. So that's going to be our jet fuel right here divided by the volatility of the price on our futures contract that's right here. Okay, so all that's all I need for that. I get a hedge ratio of 0.68. That's my H asterisk right there. How can I use that now? Well, let's imagine we're the airline and we know we're going to purchase 1 million gallons of jet fuel. And so to hedge against that, we're going to need to take a long position in heating oil futures. The, heat, the heating oil futures are standardized contracts. That's what it means to be a future as opposed to a forward. And so part of the terms of that are that a single trading unit, a single contract on heating oil futures is for 42,000 U.S. gallons. That's just part of the definition of the futures contract. So now I can determine the number of contracts right here 
by employing this formula, I say equals my hedge ratio, that's right here, I've already calculated that, multiplied by the size of the position being hedged, that's the million gallons that I want to hedge against, divided by the quantity of my futures contract, that's standardized for me, the 42,000, so 42,000 gallons. So right here, I've just implemented this formula right here, and I get the answer is 62 and a 0.25 or 16 contracts, I'm sorry, not 62, 16 contracts, approximately. That's the optimal hedge that will minimize the variance of my hedge. In other words, what we're saying is, if I want to hedge against uh, the anticipated purchase of 1 million gallons of jet fuel, I'm going to affect a long hedge or take a long position on 16 contracts for heating oil futures. Just to show you how that would might play out, let's just imagine the spot price of jet fuel increases by a dollar. Okay, so I rounded a little bit here, but then I just, using the historical correlation, I took that one dollar increase and translated into the price increase on the futures if our historical correlation held up, our correlation of 80%, if that continued to hold up, then a $1 increase in the spot price of jet fuel would correspond to a $1.50 increase in the price of the futures contract for he on heating oil futures. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, if we're going to purchase a million gallons, then that's going to be an increase in our fuel cost of a million dollars. One, the spot price went up by a dollar, maybe from three dollars and fifty cents to four dollars, to up that goes up to maybe four dollars and fifty cents. So the increase in jet fuel is a million. However, we went, we took a long position in sixteen futures contracts. What would that do for us if I just erase this out for a sec? That means each contract had a gain of a dollar fifty one. We had, we took a long position in about 16 contracts, and each contract is for 42,000 gallons. And remember, we took a long position, so we're going to get a, we're going to achieve a profit or a gain on those contracts. And you'll notice, look at this, the gain on our futures contract is a, a little bit over a million dollars. So it's not perfect. I, I have a little bit of a simplification in here, but the point is. The price in jet fuel increased by a million, but this was offset approximately by the gain on our position in the futures contract, which was the whole point of uh, impact of uh, setting up the hedge in the first place. So hopefully this is helpful. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.